this film, bringing this film together and making it happen was um, a little bit of a long process. I happened to meet Monica um, by, by coincidence when I needed to, to get permission to use a photograph of Amon Get for a, another documentary, a documentary about Oscar Schindler. And I met Helen uh, at a Shoah Foundation uh, function in Los Angeles just after meeting Monica. And Helen was asking me, uh, I mean, Monica had asked me, do you know Helen? I, I would, I've been trying to reach this woman for many years. I've been trying to meet her for many years and had never managed to meet her. And I went to Helen and asked her, I told her about Monica, and Helen said, I, don't, I, can't, I can't do this. Looking at her photograph reminds me of Amon Get. It's very, very difficult for me. But later in that, that same day, um, Helen said to me, let's talk more. She, she clearly wanted to talk more about it, and there was more to be said. Um, and uh, long story short, um, they did get in touch with each other and, and decided to meet. A lot of people often ask me, um, for both of you, uh, do, they, do Monica and Helen still speak with each other? Have they kept in touch with each other? And uh, I think that's something that we can, we can let each of them answer. I mean, Helen, do you, do you, do you want to, uh, to start with that? Uh, it would rather be difficult for me. Um, I feel for Monica, uh, but um, I also have difficulties um, seeing her uh, reminding me of those difficult times of my life with Armand Gert. And um, I have to think of myself as well because the memories are quite painful. So in that situation, I, uh, I do not keep in touch with Monica. So the two of you have not kept in touch? No, no. I, but I seen her this second time, and I was touched by her letter. She sent me uh, saying that um, she understands it is hard for me, but it's hard for her as well but we have to do it for the murdered people. And that really touched me. She's a sensitive person and she wants to do something about it, not to be forgotten. So she's brave. Do you think that people, uh, second generation in Germany, the next, your generation and the next generation feel the same way you do? about... Uh, David feels the same. David, your grandson. Yeah, of course. Because, you know, he is he's educated. He goes with me to the synagogue and uh, we went with him to Auschwitz. I didn't tell him what really happened there because he was just five years old. But I told him it's a big cemetery where Jewish people are sleeping and sleeping for a long, long time. When he knows about the Holocaust. Not everything, but uh, he knows a bit, and he will know more and more and more. He told me, look, he said, he says mama to me, you know. He said, mama, I don't want that great-grandfather. I said, look, David, you have four great-grandfathers. Choose one. He said, okay. <laughs> when we first started talking about doing this film, um, one of the things you said to me is that uh, potentially some of the people in some other survivors, some other Holocaust survivors might um, think twice about why we would be focusing on a, a perpetrator or the children or second generation of perpetrators. And how do you, what kind of response have you gotten uh, to the, to the film from survivors? Have you spoken to other survivors about the film? Have other very survivors? Very much so, very much so. Before I agreed that I will do this documentary, I did speak to a lot of my survivors and they, and they gave me a lot of courage and they told me who can tell it better than you, Helen? And um, if you can do it, we would, we would be very happy and, um, and proud of you. 
they gave me a lot of encouragement. Uh, I had a reservation because I didn't think I could do it. Mm. I, I felt, how can I possibly have to walk the walk of my past and relate to all those atrocities and brutalities that were practiced on us? How will I be able to do it? But then I just remember my people and I felt I am a survivor. It's a miracle. And, uh, and those people perish so tragically. And who will speak for them if not I? And I feel that it's my responsibility. When you saw that photograph of yes. Monica, what did you think? Well, she had dark hair at the time, and it was striking. Uh, the resemblance was striking. However, whatever she said in that page, I understood right there that she was quite unaware about that he was the commandant and he was such a brutal murderer until you told me that your grandmother told you that she saw me there uh -huh. and some of it. And then I see read that you're starting to search and trying to find out. But when you touched my shoulder telling me I want to speak about Monica, all this came back. I didn't tell anybody about it because there's so much to talk about yeah. the Holocaust there's that I so didn't much. mention there's, this part. There's, there's so much on your side of the story and there's so much on your side of the story that we, we couldn't get into in the film, obviously, because the time is very, very limited. And yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a much, much bigger story, but hopefully the fact that you did come together and you did have that experience together is something that we can all take away something and, and, and learn more and continue yes. to learn more. And it's certainly opened a lot of dialogue and a lot of people have written to me and I know that you've heard from a lot of people, I know that you've heard from a lot of people yeah. that have been touched by the film for, for, for various reasons. Yes. So hopefully that dialogue will continue. We have room, time for, I think, one more question. Um, well, we have two hands right next to each other, so, and we have one here that, okay, what? Go ahead, we'll do a quick. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a question to you. Uh, it's a very unflinching documentary, okay. uh, and uh, pain, painful to watch. Um, and in some ways, what is going on right now is like a continuation yeah. of the documentary. The question to you is, what did you have in mind initially? Oh, did you have I'll try any to answer it briefly. Yeah. What did I have in mind initially? I didn't know. I didn't know initially. I, I, I'd met Monica. I'd, spoke, I'd spoken to her, and she, when I, I really called her to get the rights to use a photograph of her father in another documentary. And we're talking, and suddenly she says, you know, I'm not my father. And just those words resonated with me. And I said, of, co of course. I, I said, do people judge you based on who your father was? And she started to laugh, and she talked to me for a long time and told me about growing up as Amon Get's daughter. And I thought, I, this, is, this is something I've never heard before, despite the, the, all the films I'd done on the Holocaust and all the history and education. So that, that's really how it, how it started. There are a lot of films. There's a lot of documentation out there. There are a lot of places where people can come, you know, go and learn about sort of the context of World War II, the context of the Holocaust. You know, a, a, a film like this, I think, is a much more personal journey and a much more personal experience. And I, I you know, I, I assume that when people are coming to this film, the audience for this film is coming to it with a little bit of understanding, a little bit of knowledge with, of, of the context. And I'm hoping that that's the case. This is sort of part well, two of learning about sort of yes. the Holocaust. And the, not, not uh, trying to t explain the Holocaust, yeah. but, the, you know, what's a, another chapter of it? Right? Is that well, a fair statement? Uh, as far as the way I feel about it, it all started with the movie Schindler's List. The movie Schindler's List brought an awakening. Before the movie, we didn't talk about it. Survi I don't, survivors didn't talk about they it. They didn't, nobody wanted to know. And uh, 
we couldn't talk. Somehow when the movie came out, it was an awakening. We were able to speak to our children more freely. And I tell you, it's very painful. It was and it is very painful for me to talk to my children about those horrors of those times. But they have to know and they want to know. Now, this is the message because when I speak to students in schools and universities, I tell them my story. And like I spoke at the university in Florida and after students taking the course of Holocaust study, two gentlemen got up and said, Helen, Dr. Berger gave us a wonderful class, very knowledgeable about the happening of Holocaust, but you made it real. And I speak to the students and universities and schools and I leave them with this message. I met two people in power. One was Amon Get, who used his power to torture and kill innocent people. And he was an evil man. The other one was Oskar Schindler, who used his power to save, protect, innocent people in crisis, and he was a good human being. So remember, we all, you have a choice in life. That's my message that I leave young people with, because it's all about making choices. Well said, well said.